the second speaker of today's session. And this is Maruf Adewole. Uh, he's a, a PhD student at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. And he's also the lab manager at the Medical Artificial Intelligence Laboratory in Lagos. Uh, and this is supported also by camera. I'm sure we'll be hearing about it. His work uh, on expanding the BRATS dataset to African populations led to the creation of the BRATS SSA dataset and the African Neuroimaging Archive. I guess he will be telling us about this. And he's currently engaged in the project HASKE, a low resource PAX platform for improving diagnostic imaging access in Sub Saharan Africa. Thank you so much um, for telling us about all of this. And the floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patricia. Too. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, it gives me great joy to be here to talk about what we've been up to in the lab, um, which has been catalyzing AI solutions for our, for our society. Uh, we understand quite all right that um, the best uh, artificial intelligence solution work best in area where they are developed. But um, Africa tends to have some challenges are caused, but which spans from the policy, but uh, we have our infrastructure, uh, personnel capacity. Um, they are not structured to enable AI solution to uh, function effectively in our society. And this was evidenced in a publication that was made um, by Dr. Farouk Faku, Daku, in combination, in conjunction with uh, Roswana Sodo and myself. Um, we discovered that potential for AI to improve um, the health outcomes in our region is greater because we have the largest disease burden and um, we also have limited availability of resources. So if we are able to bring in AI to effectively, effectively into our clinical workflow, we could be able to treat uh, more patient volume and our clinicians will also be able to do it effectively. So we dichotomize all the challenges that we have um, and we also propose some solutions towards them. Uh, we understand that infrastructure uh, deficient. We understand yeah. that we have um, skilled personnel deficiency. And we also understand that the policies that we have are not um, strong enough to adequately cover things like um, ethical data use, um, ethical data sharing, and quite an and for um, of others. So we understand these challenges and um, we propose a 12 approach solution to them, um, which starts with um, ethical approval for all cases, data anonymization, data query protocols, data access protocols for solving policy challenges. And we also have um, quality control, image control, anonymization, um, training, annotation training for personnel who will be involved in this um in this um data set handling in the region. And we also try to set up some um, infrastructure as part of the solution um, for data archiving, for data models and computing. And um, out of all these 12 solutions that we have, it's first of all led to the African New Imaging Archive, which is going to be um, a large scale repository for hosting um, AI ready-made data sets. For, for for the for our region. Um, and apart from that, we are also able to use the Kafnia solution to extract um, four solutions, which independently of uh, in which independently they've um, gone ahead and um, uh, we are currently enjoying some useful benefits from each of these solutions. The first is my lab, which um, we are currently um, situated. Um, we established my lab last year, and um, within one year of establishment, we have a lot of um, awards and laurels to point out to. So we also created the BRATS SSA Challenge. BRATS has, is a benchmarking so, um, competition run annually. Um, we created the BRATS Africa Challenge this year. We also created the BRATS um, Africa data set and also the Spark Academy, which I'll be um, giving explanation to each, each one of them in due course. So for the Medical Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, where I'm currently the lab manager, as I mentioned earlier, we are established, we are established October last year, October 2022. Um, we are the first AI 
um, laboratory to be located in a practice in a radio, private radiology practice in Africa. Um, this gives us easy access to quite an handful of things, such as um, if we come up with a solution, we can quickly uh, um, evaluate it clinically. And uh, also, it gives us the opportunity to collaborate with um, researchers from every corners of the world. And we are currently headed by Dr. Fata De Abiotu, who is our director. Um, he is a assistant radiologist in Nigeria, and he was the former president of the Association of Radiologists in Nigeria. And um, it's in his private practice that we are located. And we are currently funded by Laguna Fund John. In 2021, we received the funding for improving healthcare outcomes and healthcare equities. So that's where we got our funding from. And particularly, the funding was for the Brat, um, the Brat Africa data sets, which I'll also be mentioning in due course. So we have a temperature control facility. We have two high performing computers. We have a network attached storage, um, which is about 32 terabytes. Uh, we have to access to 24 hour electricity. This is the lab, this is the picture of the lab. We have a training space, we have access to Spark, we have access to 1.5 Tesla and also an MRI. And these are a list of personnel, including Dr. Ujuna Anazodo of Magi University, Dr. Toyobo, Dr. Tawuta Tu, um, who works in University of Pennsylvania, and Dr. Uh, Danny Alexander, who is a senior senior. Seeing the informatics that I'm um, using. And we also have a collaboration with uh, Professor uh, Alexander Hamax of King's College London, who I'm yet to, to mention. And we also have a um, lot of um, staff who comes around, um, myself, my colleagues, and we have visiting researchers who come and go who collaborate with us. And we also have some interns as well. Um, so about the Branch Africa data sets, we are able to aggregate um, uh, MRI scans from six radiological facilities across Africa, um, Nigeria specifically because of ethical issues. Um, they were loops, last loops, radiology, hospital, um, NSI, Kano Diagnostic Center, and, and Medo. Um, ab initial, we started with 309 images, but due to some peculiar switch challenges that are only, gen only um, peculiar to African, we such as image quality issues, such as misdiagnosis, such as missing modality, we had to screen the cases to um, just 95. Because um, when you want to work with BRAT, um, only four sequences are required, T1, T2, T1 contrast enhanced and flare. And um, due to this, we just had a lot of missing data. We were reduced to like, I think 30% of the initial cases we started from. So those are part of the challenges we understand with the region. And uh, we hope that uh, with the SWIM program that uh, my colleague mentioned earlier, um, by the time we are doing some another set of um, aggregation protocols um, processes, we wouldn't lose so much data as we did in this uh, pilot study. And also, um, we also have some 56 neoplasm cases that I mentioned earlier that were due to um, misdiagnosis. We package them and host them in a separate repository. So, and on comparing our data sets with um, the Bright Continuous Evaluation data set, we noticed quite an handful of, of, um, of differences, not necessarily challenges as well. Um, we discovered that, of course, a lot of cases we have in Africa are always. Um, of large volume of, of, of tumor, which is always due to late presentation of cases to diagnostic institution. We realize the BRAT um, data sets always tend to have um, smaller volumes of tumor. And we also observe some slight variation in the TE and TL configuration of each of the sequences, which are um, which tends to affect the uh, hypo intensity and hyper intensity of some of um, the cases that we say. And this varies from center to, to center. So we were able to also use the data sets to organize the Brat Africa Challenge. As mentioned earlier, Brat has been running for, for more than 12 years now, 12 years running. And now they have about 1,200 cases. And not one of those cases is from Africa. They have cases from um, Europe from America, from South America, and quite a number of cases from Asia as well. But Africa has never been represented. So this year, we are able to use that data set 
um, to, to work with a challenge. And we have eighteen teams that participated in the Vax Africa sub challenge. And with one team from Africa, we need that challenge as well. Uh, incidentally, uh, the person that win the challenge is actually a participant of one of our programs, which I'll be mentioning um, later on the Spark Academy. So we have participants six from, uh, from America, one from Norway, one from India, and another from uh, China. And we have the data descriptor paper for the challenge, which will be for the challenge that has already been released on archive, and the data descriptor for the data sets, aggregation, annotation process, which will be released shortly. So another of the last of our programs I'll be talking about is the Spark Challenge. Spark means Sprint AI Training for African Medical Energy Knowledge Translation. We discovered that um, not only has Spark platform never featured uh, African data sets. It also has never featured African team participating in the challenge. And we understand that the, the limitation due to arising from that is due to the fact that, number one, there is lack of introduction. Like uh, most people just don't know in the continent that such kind of a challenge is, is coming on. And um, there's also lack of access to high performance computing, which are required to train more, most of these um, deep learning models. And we also understand that even the people who are interested in doing them, who have access to the resources, do not also know how to do that. So to bridge those gaps, we created Spark Academy, which is meant to um, use three approach, the teach, try, use approach to transform amateurs into professionals in medical image computing. And it has three um, gangs, it has three platforms. The first aspect is to introduce um, the participants to a six weeks course, online course, and uh, followed by the academy, which we hosted for a whole week at um, 10 centers simultaneously across Africa before we now have the practicum where each team is supposed to come up with a solution and work towards presenting such solution um, in SPAC. So overall, we have 163 parts uh, applicants and uh, of which 70 of them were admitted uh, and 37% um, of trainees female will try to practice open science and um, equity and diversity inclusion as much as possible in the lab. And uh, apart from those that later went on to win uh, at the Mikai, who is one of the participants of the of the Spark Challenge, we also had some of our participants who actually went there, and one of them won a poster presentation um, based on the solution he did during our program at Spark. And um, we also had quite a handful of um, our Spark participants as well who are able to make it to Mikai 2023 participating in person. So above all, all the things that we do in the lab, they are governed by open science policies. Um, we believe strongly that in a region such as ours, the best approach towards getting um, the dividend of all this research across to all and sundry is to try as much as possible to make all our um, all our practices as open as possible. We ensure that we obtain that approvals before we start any, any research. And um, we also have data transfer agreements and data use agreements, which were adapted from what was created by the Open Science Foundation. And we only make use of open source tools at, for performing all our processing, all our analysis, all our computing in the lab. We try as much as possible to not um, uh, put any intellectual intellectual property, uh, patent rights, or none of our solutions. We believe we, we are only able to do science right now because some people have worked already to get to this stage. And um, the button is now in our hands to expand, to expand that frontier others can build on what we, we are doing. And we also, also always make sure that all the research outcomes we have in the lab, we make them open, we document all our protocols and processes and publish them. The data sets we create as well, they are open source currently on Synapse and in the due course, we'll be releasing them on the Cancer Imaging Archive um, and as well and uh, also Senudo as well. So that's in short what um, we currently are up to in the, in the, in the MyLab. Um, some of these projects will be 
bring them to come in 2024 as well. And we also have Project ASCII, which uh, will be um, getting into, into due course. Uh, ASCII to this level has uh, always been developing a prototype. It is a it is an open source ax platform where centers across Africa can um, archive their images. We'll be doing that in 2024 as well. And um, we, at this juncture, would like to see collaborations for anybody who is interested. Um, I, could be I could be contacted through the information provided earlier. Thank you very much for listening.